This video was made possible by Dashlane. Protect your digital identity for free for 30 days by going to dashlane.com slash H-A-I. Hello and welcome to another episode of kind of clickbaity titles to get you to watch something vaguely educational. Today we are going to talk about trillion dollar coins. But first, in order to understand why the US government would ever want to consider making a coin that's worth more than a gold-plated Jeff Bezos, we have to talk a little bit about the debt ceiling crisis of 2013. Now that half the audience is gone, the year was 2013. The month was January. The number one YouTube channel was Smosh, Macklemore's thrift shop was rising up on the charts, and President Barack Obama had a problem. The US was about to hit the debt ceiling. Of course, what's the debt ceiling, says someone, so here's how the debt ceiling works. Each year, Congress passes and the President signs a budget that says how much it's going to spend on different things. So maybe it says the government will spend $10 billion on Big Macs, $20 billion on Doritos Locos Tacos, and $30 billion on Pepto-Bismol. It's then up to the US Treasury to buy all those things. The Treasury gets the money to do that from two main sources. The first is taxes, which are collected from the American people and American businesses. Unless you're Amazon, of course. The US, you see, goes for the rare graduated bell curve tax bracket system. Typically though, that tax money isn't enough, so the Treasury will make up the difference by borrowing money, which is done by issuing something called a Treasury bond. Basically what happens is the Federal Reserve, which is the central bank of the United States, says to everybody, hey kids, if you want to give me $100 right now, I'll give you this super cool piece of paper which is called a treasury bond. And what this piece of paper says is, in exchange for your $100, a year from now, I'll give you back your $100 plus a little bit extra. Or if you want to wait longer, like 3 or 5 or 30 years, I'll toss in a bit extra for your trouble. So people buy these bonds, the Fed takes their $100, puts it into the bank account of the treasury, and now, just like magic, the government has a brand new $100 that they didn't have before. As time has gone on, the US government has issued more and more treasury bonds and thus taken on more and more and more and more and more debt. Seriously, like a lot of debt. The debt ceiling is an arbitrary number that Congress sets as the maximum amount of debt that the US is allowed to take on. In 2013, the number was $16.394 trillion. So if the debt were to pass $16.394 trillion, then the Fed wouldn't be allowed to borrow any more money, which means the Treasury wouldn't be able to buy all those crucial things in the budget. Normally, when the debt approaches that number, Congress just raises the debt ceiling, which means they just set a new higher number as the limit, and historically, this was a pretty uncontroversial bipartisan process. But in 2013, the Republican-led Congress refused to raise the debt ceiling unless Obama agreed to get rid of Obamacare. Unsurprisingly, Obama said no to this deal because, you know, it turned out that Obama kind of liked Obamacare. That would be like asking me to stop mispronouncing obscure words like buffet. It was kind of Obama's thing. And so, Obama began looking for ways around the debt ceiling. That's where the trillion dollar coin came into play. The idea was, if the government can't borrow more money, what if they just made more money? While that may sound like the type of idea only a drunken second grader would suggest, bizarrely, in this case, it actually made sense. See, normally, only the Federal Reserve can create new money, and it has to be backed by bonds. In other words, if the Fed wants to create 100 new dollars, they have to sell a $100 treasury bond. This helps keep the US economy from imploding in case some maniac ever gets at the controls. They can't just print as much money as they want. Except, thanks to a loophole in a 1996 bill about commemorative coins, the treasury actually can. The law, 31 USC 5112K, reads, The secretary may mint and issue platinum bullion coins and proof platinum coins in accordance with such specifications, designs, varieties, quantities, denominations, and inscriptions as the secretary, in the secretary's discretion, may prescribe from time to time. The intent of this law was to let the federal government create commemorative platinum coins for special occasions, but technically, because of the bill's unclear language, it meant that the treasury secretary could make a coin, so long as it was made of platinum, and then declare that it was worth any amount of money they wanted. So the plan was for the treasury to mint a coin, declare that the coin was worth $1 trillion, then deposit that coin into their bank account at the Fed, which would make the debt, instead of being $16.394 trillion, only $15.394 trillion. Below the ceiling. Eventually, once Congress raised the debt ceiling, the treasury would just buy back the coin or melt it down, and in theory, it would be like it never existed. And thus, it wouldn't cause inflation. Now, I'm going to tell you something that might disappoint you. Although the trillion dollar coin was genuinely considered by the White House, they never went through with the plan, so no trillion dollar coin was ever actually minted. I know, I know, the title of the video kind of made it seem like they actually made the coins, but you know what? The Greeks made it seem like they were just gifting Troy a cool wooden horse. Not everything is as it seems. 
On the bright side, now you know a bunch about treasury bonds and debt ceilings, which will come in handy the next time you're on a date and modern US monetary policy comes up, which I have to imagine happens all the time. Another thing that's sure to impress your dates is if you have an incredibly secure online presence. And if you're thinking to yourself, but HAI guy, how can I possibly have an online presence so secure that I become irresistible to potential romantic partners? Don't worry, I have a solution. Dashlane. Dashlane makes online security easy by generating safe complex passwords for each of your accounts, storing them behind one super secure password that'll be the only one you'll ever have to remember, and then autofilling them when you have to log in. That means that keeping safe with Dashlane is actually easier than being insecure the regular way. You can start using Dashlane for free by signing up at dashlane.com slash HAI, and if you want to get access to all kinds of other super cool features that keep you safe online, like dark web monitoring and a VPN, you can upgrade a premium for 10% off by using the code HAI.